Well, we've had another rug pull. We saw a nice green candle yesterday after the FOMC meeting and then poof, everything gone. All the gains gone taken today. Massive red day for growth stocks. So we're gonna talk about the rotation that's currently happening and how to go ahead and actually navigate that to continue to build wealth while growth stocks get hit in the short term. My name is Anthony Piacibono, founder of AP Growth, and on this channel, I post educational options trading content to help you build wealth in the stock market so that way you can achieve financial freedom. At the end of the video, if you found this useful, hit the thumbs up button and let's dive into the charts now. Welcome to the fun and games. Yesterday, we had the S&P selling off real low, got to about 460. FOMC meeting comes, boom, we go from red to green, boom. Today in pre-market, S&P was at a new all-time high, 474 sells off on the open and takes all the tech stocks with it and the NASDAQ as well. NASDAQ down over two and a half percent today, big red engulfing candle, which is not a good sign. If you just take a look back at when, every, anytime you have an engulfing candle, there's continuation to the downside. So you look back here, December 1st, an engulfing candle is when you take out the entire range of the previous day. So we're on the daily chart and when you see a big engulfing candle like this one, there's continuation to the downside. So we saw a big red candle here and then we will likely see continuation to the downside in the coming days. Tesla stock down 5% was at $1,000 per share this morning. So we got pushed up all the way and then market opens, boom, big dump all the way down to 922 as a low today. Almost filling the gap here, but the gap gets filled completely at about 910. So we still have a little more to go for the gap fill to be confirmed. I drew this line here because I feel like what could happen is you get pulled under 900 as a fake out, thinking that, oh look, 900 broke as, as support, but we go down to about high 890s, maybe 890 as a low, and that could likely be the low, and we trade sideways or rotate back up and, and kind of stay range bound in that 1,000 as a resistance to 900 as a support in the coming weeks. On TradingView, it says that the earnings are due February 2nd for Tesla stocks. So we could see the breakout out of $1,000 per share then and just trade sideways until then. I still see more downside for growth stocks in the coming days. NVIDIA was crazy. It was up about 6% today. We were trading at 312 and then sold off, went basically from up 7% to down 6%. A firm, I had to roll some of my positions. I had the 95 strike, so I rolled it down to the 85 strike to be safe. We were down 16% on the day, and this came because there was a probe on a firm, PayPal and Square to audit the pay later systems. I think this all just FUD and it should be blown to the side. However, like I pointed out in the last video, there is this huge gap here all the way down to about 74. So the question is, are we going to fill that? We could very likely fill that in the near term, especially if we continue with the selling off and the growth names. When the Fed came out, they said that they were going to be doing three rate hikes in 2022 and accelerating the taper. This is all stuff that everyone expected, but that's not good news for growth stocks. So the big rotation that we will be seeing is into the value plays. These are these stocks right here. So we have McDonald's and CVS. Those are two typical that will continue to have strength. If we go to the Heikinashi, you might be thinking that all stocks are red. No, it's just turning more to value plays. So we're going back to the boomer stocks. The boomer stocks are going to outperform the millennial stocks because millennial stocks are like the growth stocks and the boomer stocks are the stocks that have been around and the businesses, the businesses that have been around for hundred years and they're continuing to do well. So we have CVS here, check out the RSI, check out the st stochastic. It looks like we're heading up. looks like we're going to just keep pushing. We've been doing great. I've been watching this since we were about at 95 here and I watched the breakout. I took a small position because I personally don't have a lot of experience trading value names. So I just took a small position about 15 K size and it rode it up to about 98 and I took profit. I also had a position in Abvi and I traded the breakout here once we got above 120. Once we closed to about 122, I got a position and I held it to about 128. And then that's when I closed out the position. But again, super small trades for me. It was about 15K USD size. And this looks all super positive. If you look at Abvi here, Look at this chart. You see this, the RSI continuing to head higher. There's no signs of it turning back. You see the stochastic above and flatlined. You see the MACD opening and heading up. These are all signs you love to see. This is what I saw on Tesla stock when I bought my call options before and profited huge. It's the exact same thing just in value names or biotech. So don't think that you can't make money in this market. It's just there is a huge rotation going from growth names that aren't very profitable at the moment to names that are very profitable like 
CVS and McDonald's that have been making money for years and they're well established. That's what the rotation is going towards. So we're just going to have some more pain for these growth names. We had Rivian come out with earnings. They're at 104 and post market. The earnings were really bad. It was about a loss of $12 a share, whereas last year there was a loss of $2 per share. All things to be expected with the companies that, like Rivian and Lucid that aren't really profitable at the moment. My Lucid Strangle is doing well, 30 put and up to about the 60 strike call. Same with my Rivian Strangle. I had the uh, 155 call and the 90 strike put. Again, I, I said the 90 strike put can, could come into danger. Um, Blink one, I said that the 28 strike could come into danger. So I actually did roll this down to the 26 strike. I, didn't, I only took about a $3,000 loss to do that. So nothing huge and alarming there. It looked like we were gonna continue back up, but um, like I said previously with Tesla stock, if you're in Tesla stock, just look at this RSI. It continues to go down. It's not something you wanna be in in the short term because there's just no sign of the selling and the downtrend can, uh, ending. Like I said, what I like to see, what I like to see is the RSI coming back up and making higher lows on the daily chart. What we did see on the one hour chart was the RSI got up here when we were trading at a thousand and it looked like we would be in the in the clear but no we want to see that on the daily chart so look what happened on the one hour chart when we were pushing up like that it looked like we were starting to run but you go pull it up on the daily chart and you see no signs of us like that this small inflection up is from that and then we went right back down so it, this still looks like we will continue to sell off uh, hopefully we bottom at about 900 and then make our way back up or at least trade sideways. But again, you never know what can happen. If you just take a look at what Tesla has respected in the past, you'll see that there's this huge trend line going back from COVID at the bottom here. And we res respected it the whole way, never touched it. So what's possible is a retest of the trend line. It's always possible. So we could just dip down to about 800 as a low, and that could be the new low for Tesla stock and then come up. Uh, or we could break the trend line, but I don't think that's very likely. On the upside, uh, we didn't break this uh, 1240 here. So in the future, early 2022, doesn't look like we'll break 1400. And at the end of 2022, it's highly unlikely for us to break 1700. And don't expect Tesla stock to go lower than $800 per share in the coming weeks. As for myself, I'm holding about 25% cash and the rest is invested and I'm holding those strangles to let the premium run out to continue to make money. But I had to take a loss today on a firm and a loss on blink so far. Other strangles are all good, but that's the update for today. Let me know in the comments below what your portfolio is made of and I can make a video talking about those or what I think about those positions in the short term to medium term. Again, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos just like this and I'll see you in the next one.